very good afternoon i hope and i believe all of you are doing well uh i'm quite proud whether the audio visual is all good All right, I can see the video is good and I hope the audio is also good. So welcome to the today's YouTube live session where we are going to discuss the top 10 IVP spotters. IVP that is your intravenous pilogram or the intravenous urography basically. So uh, what's the plan for today? Like today 10 a.m. we had the episode 52 of uh, NF100 where we discussed the easy tricks, the mnemonics to remember the suture materials. Then we are having this IVP class Followed by this immediately at 2.45 p.m., we will have open house session, which is basically your podcast and ask me anything session where you can ask your queries, uh, right? And then we have at 5 p.m., uh, we have the KBMD, right? Like daily KBMDs, the Con Banega MD live quiz. And today it's going to be the top 10 mnemonics, right? The easy, most important topics, the top 10 mnemonics. That is what we are going to see at 5 p.m. All of these are free classes, basically. And if asked for a code to enroll while you are enrolling for the same, you can use the code Dr. Nikita. Yes, uh, thank you, Dr. Giri. It was a fun video, I believe, right with all the bloopers there. Okay, so now you know basically, you know, how much effort it takes to make one video. It's not as easy as it seems, right? Okay, uh, so a quick update on the new batches that we are going to start. That is for NEAT PG and for FMG as well. We are starting with MCQ Marathon batch uh, from uh, Wednesday, that is March 23. It's a two-month course. And we are also starting for FMG, the high yield revision and the MCQ batch. It's a two-month course. I'll be catering to radiology in uh, both of these batches. All right. And so starting with the IVP appearances, we are going to discuss the most important ones. All right. This is going to be approximately like uh, 30 minutes, half an hour session. And as I said, then we'll have the open house and then we would have the KBMD. Okay. And what we have introduced now in the subscription is the light subscription, which basically has the test series and the question bank. Plus, you have the plus and iconic. The minimum is two months, which is available now. Previously, it used to be three months. Now, you have two months subscription also available. If you use the code, you will have the additional 10% off as well. Okay. So starting with this one, the first one, which is the most important one. Okay. So this is the most important IVP finding, which comes uh, very frequently in the exam. Yes. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Dr. Nisha, Jadeep, uh, Nikhil, Arushi, uh, everyone here. Absolutely right. So this is uh, basically, as you can see here in the image, this is the cobra and this is the cobra head. So how is the cobra head? Basically, it is dilated part. So the, basically, the cobra represents the ureter and the cobra head represents the dilatation. Okay, the cobra head represents the dilatation. So this has been asked very frequently, like you can see here in the IVP. This is the ureter and at the insertion, it is showing the dilatation bilateral, basically. The ureter showing the insertion pay dilatation like the cobra head. So this is called as cobra head or adder head appearance. And this is seen with ureterocene. Okay, this is seen with ureterocene where you see that the dilatation of the ureter. This is also for FMG, absolutely. So where you see the dilatation, that is your ureterocene. That means the dilatation of the ureter at the insertion. Remember, it's not uterocene or urethrocene. So that's the first one here. Very, very important. Going to the next one. First, identify this investigation. What do you think is this? Is it IVP? Is it CTIVU? Is it your MRU? What investigation do you think is this? What do you think is this investigation here?
Very good, Shabam. This is MRU. This is MR Urography. You don't see the white bones in the background, right? So this is not X-ray or this is not CT scan, Dr. Nisha. Is that clear? If it was CT IVU, you would see the white bones. The bones are not seen. This is MRU. And you can see the two kidneys which are coming medially and fusing together like a horseshoe, which is basically the U shape. So in IVP, the appearance is called as the shaking hand or the handshake appearance. Basically, one kidney and the second kidney coming in the midline shaking hands joining hands with each other and you have uh and you have this is also called as your flower vase appearance right this one is your x-ray wala ivp where you can see this white vertebra right so this is your x-ray you can see this x-ray image in the background so this is your uh this is your x-ray ivp this is mru flower vase appearance so basically one kidney second kidney and you have the two ureters coming so this is like a flower vase appearance this is seen with horseshoe kidney okay this is seen with horseshoe kidney horseshoe kidney has an association with turners right it is seen in turners it can come as an isolated abnormality or it can occur in turners as well okay next one as you can see here what is the appearance which we are seeing here what is this appearance that we are seeing here? Right, this is the drooping lily. So on this IVP, you can see this uh, ureter and you can see this, uh, the lower pole renal moiety, which is showing the drooping lily appearance. Okay, so this is the drooping lily appearance. Remember this as D4D, it is seen with duplication, the renal and the ureteric duplication. Basically, that gives your uh, drooping lily. The concept here basically is why do we see the drooping lily is this is renal duplication. So you have an upper pole moiety and you have a lower pole moiety. The upper pole moiety is basically the one which is enlarged. It is hydronephrotic. It is obstructed. So it is non-functioning. Now, if the kidney is non-functioning, it will not accumulate the contrast. It will not excrete the contrast. And that is why we, may, we are not seeing the upper pole renal moiety. While actually there is one which is present there. That hydronephrotic enlarged uh, upper pole moiety is compressing on the lower pole moiety and that is why it is drooping down. So that is why we see the drooping lily because of the upper pole moiety which is compressing on the lower pole moiety. So yes, in this uh, duplication, we basically have your Wiegert mayer rule, right? It's your Wiegert mayer rule. The upper one goes down and medially. The ureter inserts down and medially. The lower one has the upper insertion, basically orthotopic insertion. Out of that, which one is more predisposed to ureterocele and which one is more predisposed to VUR? Remember, U for U, the ureterocele is more common with upper pole moiety, U for U. Lower, you can write as lower. The lower pole moiety has the VUR. Okay, VUR is common with the lower pole. Okay, so the reflux is more common with the lower pole. So this is drooping lily. That is your duplication. Do not get confused. Do not confuse this with your water lily. Where do you see the water lily sign? We have seen in the recent YouTube video water lily sign. Water lily. So basically you have a lesion with the lily floating on the water that is seen with high dated cyst. Okay, that is seen with high dated cyst. Water lily. Okay. Going to the next one. Can someone tell me what are you seeing in this image? Let me zoom this image for you. Focus on this area. What are we seeing here? Look at all this. You can also see here. What is this? What appearance is this called as on IVP? Very good, Arushi. Absolutely right. So what we see here is like the paint brush appearance that we are seeing here. This is this paint brush appearance that we are seeing here. So this is what we are seeing here. 
this is what we are seeing here so this is called as this is called as paint brush appearance how does the paint brush look like it has this bristles right the paint brush has the bristles like this these bristles can also represent what is the other term for the paint brush the bristles can also represent the flowers in the bouquet so this paint brush appearance is also called as bouquet of flowers appearance right it is also called as bouquet of flowers appearance okay so these bristles basically represent the medulla collecting ducts which are dilated so it's a problem with the medulla so the condition is medullary sponge kidney okay it's a medullary sponge kidney where you get this paint brush appearance the dilated collecting ducts they accumulate the contrast and they look like the paint brush so remember the collecting ducts it is the medulla this is medullary sponge kidney okay this is seen with medullary sponge kidney going to the next one what are you seeing in this image what nephrogram do we get in this condition now a similar sort of image was asked in the recent fmg exam it was a mri image though the question was identify a uh, nice so purple and ultrasound that is your multi cystic your dysplastic kidney the where are the where there are those multiple cysts the congenital condition usme milta hai so bubble on ultrasound okay now this is your polycystic kidney disease where both the kidneys you can see has a multiple fluid density lesions so this is your polycystic kidney disease in the ultrasound you can see the black black lesions in the kidney that is the polycystic kidney disease so the nephrogram appearance right what is the nephrogram appearance what do we mean by nephrogram nephrogram means when it is still in the renal parenchyma then you get the excretory phase where it goes into the colysis okay <coughs> excuse me so in the nephrogram what happens is okay so in the nephrogram what happens is uh you have the multiple cyst the polycystic kidney disease where you would see that the cyst they are not communicating with the excretory system okay the cyst are not communicating with the excretory system so they will not take up the contrast so we will see this filling defects in the kidney so like this swiss cheese appearance okay this is called as swiss cheese appearance what is swiss cheese swiss cheese is a cheese which has this holes in it like it has this holes so the cyst are basically the holes that you see on the nephrogram so that is the swiss cheese appearance on nephrogram what do we see in the excretory phase now because of the cyst what happens to the colysis is they get separated away okay they get separated away because there are large cyst in between the colysis so that gives the spider leg appearance okay so you get the spider leg appearance look at this one these are the normal colysis which are close together and these are the colysis which are separated away okay the colysis are separated away because basically there are large cysts in between the colysis this is called as spider leg appearance which is seen with polycystic kidney disease is is it autosomal dominant or is it autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease is it autosomal dominant or autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease it is autosomal dominant why autosomal dominant because the large cyst which are present in between the colysis these are present in autosomal dominant in autosomal recessive you do not have those large cyst basically in autosomal recessive you get the sandre or the striated appearance okay you get the sandre or the striated appearance all right going to the next one what is this showing what do you think is this ivp showing here retro cable uh, you can see that there is pathology on both the sides the ureters 
this is not a putty kidney remember this is not your calcified kidney this is ivp showing the contrast in the pelvic calicial system so this is uh, not your uh, putty kidney this is not retrocaval retrocaval fish hook is only on one side right on the right side generally you can see there is something happening on the left side also that is why this is not your uh, fish hook or retrocaval yes this is your this is your maiden waist deformity of the ureter what is a maiden waist like the maiden waist that is basically your patli kamar so you have the ureters going like this and the patli kamar the ureters are medially deviated so we have the ureters and then we have the ureters which are medially deviated so basically maiden waist deformity of ureters means the medially deviated ureters okay the medially deviated ureters normally if you see the ureters they are present in the para vertebral location they'll be present on the sides of the vertebra now if you see that the ureter is overlying the vertebra that means it has been medially deviated so what is causing the medial deviation basically the ureters are getting pulled by the fibrosis in the retroperitoneal region so this is seen with retroperitoneal fibrosis which is primary one is called as ormonds disease okay right the primary one is called as ormonds and uh, why the ls what is the ln okay so uh, what do we what were we discussing so ormonds disease is your primary that is your uh, primary retroperitoneal fibrosis now you can see that this is the vertebra and you see that okay and you see that this is the ureter overlying the vertebra are you talking about the lower limb lower limb nine ye ye jo image hai ye as a schematic diagram hai this is not your radiological imaging okay this is just a schematic diagram these are not the ureters this is just to show the maiden waist the figure of a female with a patli kamar this is not any radiological image okay so when you see the ureters overlying the vertebra that is medial deviation ormonds disease maiden waist deformity okay next one now this is what is your okay this is what is your retrocaval ureter okay what is a retrocaval ureter as the term says retrocaval that means you have the ivc and you have the aorta and behind the ivc goes the right sided ureter okay goes the right sided ureter so what happens in that case the ivc compresses the ureter so till that point the proximal ureter it will show the dilatation there would be proximal hydro ureter right so look at this one this is a ureter going behind the ivc normally it should go in front so that's why you see that the proximal ureter is dilated compressed by ivc okay so look at this one you can see the ureter only on the right side going like this and you can see the proximal dilatation the proximal prominence this is called as j shaped ureter yes it would be right side because the ivc is on the right side okay so that is your j shaped ureter and some books also mention it as fish hook ureter it is called as j shape or the reverse j shape or the fish hook ureter now look at this what investigation is this what investigation is this this is a ct scan right white bone this is the aorta this is the ivc right the ivc on the right now you can see that this contrast containing some tubular structure there that is your ureter behind the ivc this is the left ureter this is the right ureter normally it should be here it has gone behind the ivc okay are you talking about this one prakar this right sided hyperdensity this is basically the oral contrast in the bowel loops right in the bowel loops on the right side you have the oral contrast you can see these bowel loops also which are hyperdense because we have given oral contrast to the patient right the iodinated contrast is given orally as well okay is this clear with everyone all right let's go to the next one now 
this is your another fish hook urator okay this is your another fish hook urator so it is mentioned in your retrocable urator as well and it is mentioned iv contrast is iv yes nuzer as the term says intravenous pilography so basically what do we do in ivp is we give the iodinated contrast iv it's excreted by the kidneys so we basically look at that excretion and that is how we identify the abnormalities in the excretion in the kidney basically okay so yes iodinated contrast is used now this is your fish hook again this is the fish hook that you can see here this is the ureter containing the contrast so this is the ureter which ideally should have gone down like this but this ureter is elevated because of the prostate which is enlarged so this is the ureter imagine the prostate is getting enlarged and it is pushing the ureter up so this is seen with b h basically which causes the ureteric elevation okay basically which causes the uh, ureteric elevation so in ivp what do we do is we take immediate film 1 minute 7 minutes 10 minutes basically different time pe to look at the excretion whether the excretion is normal it is delayed what type of excretion it is we uh, take a post void film also where we ask the patient to void the urine and come back basically to look for pvr the post void residue like in this patient of bph the pvr would be high so it also helps us identify the post void residue okay the post void residue going to the next one what are we seeing in this image here what are we seeing in this image here before the ivp let us first have a look at the ct scan what is the ct scan showing look at the right kidney look at the left kidney that's the left kidney there what do we see in the left kidney what is abnormal just a second something happened okay all right yes sir ideally the fish hook should be on both the sides but it depends in which it it might be asymmetrical it's not necessary that it would be always symmetrical okay Uh, why do you call it medullary sponge kidney arushi what is the abnormal thing in the left kidney see well this is the right kidney which is showing good enhancement this is the left kidney which is showing the gray color nevra tell me emphysematous emphysema means a black color are you seeing the black color here no okay so basically what are we seeing here yes pankaj this is a fluid density this is hydronephrosis gross hydronephrosis and this white lining that we are seeing this is basically the hydronephrosis pushing the renal parenchyma the renal parenchyma has become atrophic so basically this is called as your paper thinning of the renal parenchyma paper thin it is very very thin renal parenchyma because of the hydronephrosis pushing the parenchyma leading to atrophy so this is paper thinning this is gross hydronephrosis on the left side so in that case uh no worries so in that case if you do an ivp the same thing is what you would see that only the rim of the kidney would be enhancing like in this case you can see that this is the rim enhancing so basically this is a previously asked question that rim sign okay so this is the rim sign which is seen with hydronephrosis okay this is the rim sign which is basically seen with severe hydronephrosis where only the rim shows the enhancement right compression belt why the compression belt is used or uh, why the compression belt so in ivp we put that compression belt so that thoda sa renal compression ho ke the contrast will be there it will not be excreted very soon thoda sa hold up hoga it allows us to take the images right okay nikunj how to differentiate pyelonephritis from hydronephrosis understand the terminology pyelonephritis it is the inflammation nephritis of the renal parenchyma as well so in pyelonephritis acute the kidney would be enlarged and you would see that striated pattern you would see the wedge shaped areas like this 
which are hypodense classical that is called as striated nephrogram okay so you would see the hypodense areas the normal enhancing areas while in hydronephrosis it is the gray color density that you would be seeing the fluid density severe hydronephrosis the parenchyma is thin right so pyelonephritis will have the striated nephrogram right the parenchyma will show that hypodense areas alternating with the enhancing areas is that clear all right so that is the rim sign coming to the next one can anyone make the diagnosis there are multiple images which are shown here what do you think is this image showing? What do you think is the diagnosis? So the diagnosis here is basically papillary necrosis. Okay, it is papillary necrosis. Uh, image of pyelonephritis. Um, let me see if I can just uh, share the image with you pyelonephritis i hope you are able to pyelonephritis city let me see if we get the images of pyelonephritis a good image that we were talking about like look at this one so look at the kidney here which is showing this hypodense areas okay which is showing this hypodense areas the non-enhancing areas that is your pyelonephritis right look at this one so you have this kidney here which is showing this dark areas the wedge shape the dark areas that is the striated nephrogram as it is called as okay all right so going back to this one papillary necrosis okay this is papillary necrosis multiple causes it is your NSAIDs analgesic abuse diabetes mellitus be sickle cell anemia there are multiple causes of papillary necrosis what is the papilla papilla is the renal pyramid hai, uska part which is going into the calyx that is the papilla so papillary necrosis means this part is getting necrosed so when it gets necrosed the contrast in the calyx will communicate with the papilla like you see here this is the calyx the contrast will communicate with the papilla and that is what gives what sign what sign is that called as uh, let me just zoom the image so this is called as the ball the golf ball on t appearance okay so you have the ball on t this is a ball on t appearance the next one what happens is the calyx ka fornix grows around the necrosed papilla so this is the fornix you can see it's growing like this like a claw this is called as lobster claw sign so this is the calyx growing around the necrosed papilla that is the lobster claw sign another sign next one is this uh, calyx is forming a ring the claw is becoming complete forming a ring around this necrosed papilla so you can see the non-enhancing area in the center and there is a ring that is called as signet ring appearance right that's a signet ring sign and then you see the calyx which has become convex normally the calyx should be concave like this it should be concave here it has become ulta it has become convex right so that is clubbing of the calysis so what signs do we see basically in papillary necrosis we have ball on t appearance we have the lobster claw appearance we have the signet ring sign okay we have the signet ring sign and we have the clubbing of the calysis okay so these are the various signs signet ring sign has been asked previously in the exam signet ring sign on ivp is seen with papillary necrosis okay coming to the last one uh, which is a bit unusual one uh, what do you think is this showing here basically you can see this kidney the pelvis which is grossly dilated the ureter has an abnormal direction. The exit point is a bit different. And this is called as balloon on spring appearance. So basically the ureter is the string and this is the balloon. This is the balloon on string appearance which is seen with pelvic ureteric junction obstruction. That is basically your PUJ obstruction. Okay, that is seen with PUJ obstruction. So, this is dilated and you will see the ureter. 
that is the balloon on string which is seen with puj obstruction right uh, puj obstruction what surgery do we do if you remember from a kbmd top 10 mnemonics the pelvis wants to say hi to the ureter there is a obstruction both of them want to say hi so that is your anderson heinz operation right that is your anderson Heinz operation, the pelvis wants to say hi to the ureter. This is done in a son, that is a child. This is your pediatric condition, Anderson, Heinz. The ureter is not normal in the case. The direction, the orientation is different. Okay, that's the only thing which is abnormal, right? So, let us quickly revise what are the appearances that we saw, the top 10 IVP, Cobra head or adder head, right? So you have the cobra head or the adder head, ureter seal. You have the horseshoe kidney, which basically shows the hand shape or the flower vase appearance. You have the drooping lily, which is seen with duplication, we got mayor rule. Then you have the paintbrush appearance, also called as bouquet of flower appearance, medulla, it is your medullary sponge kidney. Then you have your Swiss cheese nephrogram, which are the holes in the kidney, which are basically the cyst, autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. This in the excretory phase, it spreads the calyces away. That is called as spider leg appearance. Okay, that is called as spider leg appearance, autosomal dominant. Then you have the maiden waste deformity, where the ureters overlie the vertebra. Ideally, they should be lateral. Both ureters medially deviated, that is maiden waste, retroperitoneal fibrosis. Then we have the retrocaval ureter behind the IVC, IVC compressing the ureter at that point. So there is proximal hydro ureter. We see the deviation. This is reverse J shaped or the fish hook ureter. The fish hook ureter can also be seen with BPH, where the BPH causes the elevation of the lower ureter that gives the fish hook appearance. And then you have the rim sign where only the rim is seen, paper thinning parenchyma, only the rim of parenchyma enhancing, that is hydronephrosis. Then we have papillary necrosis, ball on T, lobster claw, signet ring, and the clubbing of calysis. And then we have the balloon on string, that is your dilated this string is the ureter which is not dilated. So there is hydronephrosis but no hydrourator. That is PUJ obstruction. That is the balloon on string side. Right. So these are the top 10 IVP appearances. Very, very important. We are meeting now immediately after this session on the Unacademy app for a podcast open house session. Ask me anything session where you can ask your queries no matter what it might be. And as we mentioned, we are meeting again at 5 p.m. For KBMD, top 10. Okay, the top 10 mnemonics. That is basically Con Banega MD, a live quiz to help you remember the uh, volatile topics with easy, fun mnemonics. And side by side, it helps you assess your preparation as well. Okay. Iska uh, PDF may share kar dungi. Yesterday's PDF I've already shared. Right, yesterday we discussed personality disorders in the YouTube session that I've already shared on the Telegram group. This also I'll be sharing uh, on the Telegram group. All right. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining in for this session. I hope you found this helpful. I'll see you in the next five minutes for open house and at 5 p.m. for the KBMD. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Take care and keep studying.